Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the lake. The Elf Submarine. Your Majesty, may I present the Elf Factory's latest toy, the Elf Submarine. Ah, yes. Jolly good. Does it float? Does it float? Of course it floats. Allow us to demonstrate. We carefully chose this day to test the submarine, as there are no other boats on the lake. Hello, me hearties! It's Redbeard, the elf pirate! Yo ho ho! Land ahoy! Um, should the ship be leaning like that? Maybe it's the weight of all that treasure. She's sinking! Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! <laughs> Curses! Me ship and me treasure gone down to the bottom of the sea. How sad. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a perfect day to test the submarine with no boats on the lake. What about Mr. Redbeard's treasure? Yes, me treasure! How will I get it back? If only we had some way of sailing underwater to look for it. Ah, if only. Anyway, back to my submarine. Uh, there's the a... submarine! We can use the submarine! Clever Ben! Hang on! The elf submarine is a toy! It's not for going on adventures. Oh, so it can't go underwater? Yes, it can. It'll probably sink like a stone. No, it will not. Good. That's that sorted. Captain Redbeard, our submarine is at your service. Thank you, Your Majesty. But... But I'll be needing a crew. Aye, aye, Captain Redbeard. Can I come? And me. I'd better come too. If there's any trouble, I can use magic to help us. No, Nanny Palum. There will be no magic on the elf submarine. Because we're elves. And elves don't do magic. Yes, we know. He's in the Polly, my faithful friend, you'll have to wait here. <laughs> Mr. Elf, steer the submarine. Aye, aye, Ben and Holly, wind up the engine. Aye, aye, aye Captain. What shall I do? Why, you just sit there and look pretty, my little mermaid. Oof. I know this lake. I've sailed on it often. Are you a sailor? I was a sailor. I'm not anymore. Why not? Big Bad Barry. Who's Big Bad Barry? Only the biggest, giganticest, most enormous fish the world has ever seen. He's eaten nine of Dad's boats. You lost nine boats? I thought I was a bad sailor. I'm not a bad sailor. Just unlucky. That big bad Barry is quite big. And bad. Dive, if you please, Mr. Elf. Dive, dive, dive. Oh, it's so pretty. Look. Where? What is it? It's Redbeard's boat. By Neptune, you're right. Well spotted, Ben! Oh, for a moment I thought you'd seen Big Bad Barry. Ho ho! Now I can get me treasure back! Let's get it and go. I don't like it down here. I love it! All the fish and the flowers and that big underwater cloud. You don't get underwater clouds, me hearty. Shiver me timbers! It's a fish! It's so big! 
It looks bad. Is it Barry? It is. It's Big Bad Barry. He's swimming towards Redbeard's boat. Oh, dear. He's going to eat it. No! Me treasure! <laughs> Did you see that? He swallowed it whole, like it were a grape. Oh, what a shame. Shall we go home, then? Go home? But we haven't got me treasure! Well, we can't do much about that now. I never thought I'd say it, but Nanny Plum is right. Unless you want to sail into Barry's stomach and take your treasure back, this adventure is over. You're right, me fruity pancake. Mm. Take us home, Mr. Ralph. Aye, aye, Captain Redbeard. Uh, who turned out the lights? It's all gone dark. Where are we? Oh, we must have sailed into a cave. Mr. Elf was chatting instead of looking where he was going. I was parked. Well, we're somewhere strange, and no mistake. And I'll shave me beard off if there's not something fishy going on. Turn on the lights, Mr. Elf. Aye, aye, Captain. What's a pong? Where are we? Look! Me ship! There are more boats as well. <gasps> it's Bunty! The boat Big Bad Barry ate last winter. That's my old boat, Trixabel. And there's Fifi. And this Boo Boo. Uh, if all those boats are inside Big Bad Barry, then we must be inside Big Bad Barry. By all that's wet and fishy, you're right. We're in the belly of the big fish. That explains the smell. Just think. All those years I tried to catch Barry, and now he's caught me. How are we going to get out of here? If we could get Big Bad Barry to open his mouth, we could just sail out. Oh, very clever, Ben. Only... How do we get him to open his mouth? Hmm. Maybe it's time to ask for a bit of advice. Can someone answer their phone? It's not my phone. It's not mine either. Oh, it's mine. Hello? Oh, hello, Nanny Plum. What's that? They've got good news and bad news. What's the good news? They've found the treasure. Hooray! And what's the bad news? They've been swallowed by a giant fish. What? Are they OK? Uh, I'll ask. Is my submarine all right? It's not scratched, is it? Listen, Clever Clogs. We need your help. How can we get Big Bad Barry to open his mouth? Someone needs to talk to the fish. Nanny Plum can speak fish. Ah, Nanny Plum, you must tell the fish a joke and make him laugh. That's an idea. A very stupid idea, but an idea. What's the plan? I'm going to tell Big Bad Barry a joke to make him laugh. What? Utter nonsense. It was the wise old elf's idea. It's brilliant. Everyone back in the sub, get ready to sail! Hmm. What's a good fish joke? I know. <coughs> Did it work? I don't know. He might not get it. <laughs> Something's happening. I think he liked the joke. <laughs> The elf pirate Redbeard and his crew return. It's a triumph! Hooray! Hooray! So you got the treasure? Nope. You got your boat? Nope. So in what way is this trip a triumph, then? Well, we're not inside a big fish. In that case, congratulations! It's a shame the treasure's lost. It's not lost. I know where it is, and no one will ever find it in the belly of Big Bad Barry. That's true. Of course it is, me tasty little fruit tree. Mm. Oh. 
Nanny Plum, what was the joke you told Big Bad Barry? It was, where do fish keep their money? We don't know. Where do fish keep their money? In a riverbank. Uh, <sighs> that's not very funny. I know. It's a bit of a rubbish joke. But then fish find the silliest things funny. They have very small brains. Where do fish keep their money? Oh, I get it. A riverbank. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. Visiting the Marigolds. <coughs> Hi, Holly. Do you want to come and play? I'd like to play, Ben, but I can't. We're going to visit King and Queen Marigold. They're a bit snooty. I'm glad I'm not going. I wish I wasn't going. Maybe your mum will let you stay and play with me. Mummy, can I play with Ben today? What a good idea. Hooray! Ben can come too. Oh. That's all right, isn't it, Mr Elf? Oh, yes. Go off and enjoy yourself, Ben. See you later. Bye. Oh, you're coming too, are you? <laughs> OK. Magic car, drive on. This is fun. A magic car. Yes, it uses fairy dust to make it go. Cool. I want you all on your best behaviour today. Yes, Queen Thistle. King and Queen Marigold's home will be full of very precious things. Horrible, but precious. So you mustn't touch anything. Visiting King and Queen Marigold sounds like hard work. It'll be exhausting. Here we are. King and Queen Marigold's castle. Oh, what a horrible building. Such bad taste. It's beautiful. Cool castle. Hello and welcome. Holly, you remember King and Queen Marigold? Hello, Hello Princess, Princess Holly. Holly. Hello, and this is my best friend Ben. You've met him before. Of course. The charming little goblin. I'm not a goblin. I'm an elf. Oh, an elf? How exotic. Did you have a pleasant journey? It must be so nice to leave your little kingdom behind for a day. Tell us honestly, what do you think of our castle? Honestly, it looks like a complete... It's very nice. I wish we had a castle like this, Mummy. Oh, before we had it rebuilt in plastic, it was made of stone. Imagine, how primitive. Our castle is made of stone. Ah, but you live in an old-fashioned castle. Mm, it must be very uncomfortable. Not really. Oh, you've brought your ladybird. Ugh. Down, Gaston, down! Oh, that means he likes you. Charmed, I'm sure. Let's go inside. We'll give you the tour. Can Gaston come too? As long as he wipes his feet. Yes, if you could... All wipe your feet. And please don't touch anything. And if you could, try not to breathe too heavily. We've got lots of precious things. <laughs> Elf! 
as you can see, we've turned the idea of the hallway on its head. Ridiculous. Wow! It's all upside down. Amazing. Oh, where's Gaston gone? Uh, uh, there's Gaston. He's walking on the ceiling. No, Daddy. Gaston's walking on the upside down floor. Clever Gaston. Hmm, yes, and I see he didn't wipe his feet. <laughs> Nanny, clean it up. I'm not your servant. That's right, Nanny. You're my servant. Thank you, Your Majesty. So clean it up, Nanny. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Muddy footprints, away you go. Good. Now, where were we? There are 100 rooms in our castle. What do you do with all those rooms? We fill them, my boy, with things. This is our collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Oh, there is nothing quite as wonderful as a well polished pebble. Oh, indeed. What do they do? They're beautiful. Please don't touch them. We don't want them to get sticky. Children always have sticky hands. No, we don't. Yes, you do. Do you think the pebbles look beautiful, King Thistle? What? Oh, yes. Very, uh, pebbly. This way. Ugh, green fly. Mm. Good boy, Gaston. You won't be needing dinner now. Oh, I see you found our pet green fly. Lucinda, Gucci, and Timmy. Oh, but where is Timmy? Ah. Timmy! 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 Hmm, perhaps he's gone for a walk. Timmy! Gaston, spit Timmy out. <coughs> Ah, Timmy. <laughs> oh, 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 playing hide and seek, were we? <laughs> now you may find the next room a little chilly. <laughs> it's freezing in here. Yes, this room must be kept well below freezing temperature at all times. All these lovely things are made of ice. They look very beautiful, Queen Marigold. Yes, they're, uh, cool. Please don't touch. Are they made with magic? Oh, no. That would be too easy. They're made from ice that froze over a thousand years ago. Ooh. And hand-carved by Norwegian mining pixies. These sculptures are one of a kind and simply irreplaceable. Ooh, a swan, that's nice. I like swans. Oh, dear. Nanny, what have you done? You've broken the swan's head off. It's all right. I'll magic another one. Abracadabra, make me a bird. Ice thingy. Nanny! That's not a swan. It looks like a hen. Or a duck, maybe. It looks lovely. I like ducks. This way, do keep up. This is our finest and most treasured collection of all antique toys. Amazing. You must play in here all the time. I could play here forever. This monkey is over a hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> and this clown is over 200 years old. <laughs> Apparently, they were made at the Elf Factory by someone called the Wise Old Elf. We know the Wise Old Elf. <gasps> you know the Wise Old Elf? What's he like? He's wise. He's old. He's... He's a grumpy old elf that's a bit clever. This is my favourite toy. A clockwork fairground ride. But sadly, it's broken. Don't 
Don't worry. I can mend it. I don't think so. It needs to be seen by an expert. Elves are experts. And I'm an elf. <laughs> <laughs> and I can help you, Ben. Rawr! Don't touch! These toys must not be touched by children. We'll have to touch it to mend it. Um, okay. There, it's mended. Vroom, vroom, beep, beep. It stopped. I want it to go again. Oh, yes, again, again, again. More, more, more. Okay. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> King and Queen Marigold's castle isn't boring at all. Yes, actually, it's quite fun, isn't it? Choo choo! <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. Camping out. Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. Are you ready to come camping? Yes, please. Um, why have you brought an orange? It's to scare off gnomes. You know what they say. To scare off a gnome, bring an orange from home. What's wrong with gnomes? Oh, you don't want to bring a gnome on a camping trip. They talk and talk and talk and talk. Yes, gnomes are just like elves. Absolutely not. Gnomes are greedy, boring creatures who talk and talk and talk and Goodness, talk and... Goodness, look at the time. We really should be going. Bye, Mummy and Daddy. Bye, Nanny. Goodbye. Have fun. Watch out for those gnomes. Here's the timetable. One, set up camp. Two, hang up washing. Three, make a campfire. Four... Dad, we're on holiday. Try to relax, Mr Elf. I'll do my best, Mrs Elf. Here we are. Yippity-doo-dah! <laughs> <laughs> will there be any dancing? Can we sing songs? There will be no dancing or singing. Just camping. Here's the tent. Shall I magic the tent up for us, Mr Elf? Holly, I'd rather you didn't do any magicking. Remember, this is an elf camp. Elves have been camping for hundreds of years. We can put tents up with our eyes closed. Wow! One elf tent. Hooray! Lovely. Now we're on holiday. Yes. And that means there's holiday work to be done. Holiday work? Next on the list, hang out the washing. But we've only just arrived. Why do you need to hang out the washing? A campsite can never be too clean and tidy. I'll slice the orange. Mrs Elf, how do oranges keep gnomes away? It's the smell. Gnomes hate the smell of oranges. Oh. There. Now we're safe. Next on the list, collect sticks for the campfire. Here are some sticks. Here are some more. OK, that's enough sticks. <laughs> oh. Hello there. A gnome. Mind if I join you? Uh, well... 
Thank you. I'll only stay for a week or two. Oh, no. But we had an orange. Yes. I wouldn't have found you if it weren't for the smell of this orange. But gnomes hate oranges. Normally, yes. But I'm on a balanced diet, you see. If I eat ten pies and twenty steam puddings, I need to balance that by eating fruit. <sighs> Let's make a fire. How do you make a fire, Mr Elf? Rub two sticks together really fast, like this. <sighs> you have to rub the sticks a little bit faster. <sighs> Would you like to hear the interesting thing I know about sticks? <sighs> sticks grow on trees. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh. I'm nice and warm now. That's because fire is hot. <laughs> <sighs> I'm hungry. Me too. What a surprise. I've hardly eaten anything today. I've only had ten pies, a skip full of chips, 30 apple tarts. Wow! That's a lot. A sponge cake, 100 sausages and that orange. I thought you said you were on a diet. Oh, I am. There are some things I don't eat, like stones, wood and television sets. But nobody eats those things. What? You're on this diet too? I never knew it was so popular. What's for dinner, Mrs Elf? Cheese and onion pie. Ooh, thank you very much, Lee. That's tasty. Yes, it's crummy. Ooh, very good. What's that? It's an owl. It's got very big eyes. Would you like me to tell you an amazing fact? About owls? Uh, I'll take that as a yes. The owl is in fact a bird. It has big eyes for seeing things. <laughs> Six o'clock. Time for bed. Oh. I'll put the fire out. Can't you leave it to keep the owl warm? It's dangerous to leave a fire going, Princess Holly. <laughs> That's right. Don't go to bed till the fire is out. And don't go to bed with a carrot on your head. <laughs> That's silly. Then, Holly, you get in the tent and go to sleep. Mr Gnome, you have to go home. But we're having fun. Elf camping is not meant to be fun. Bedtime is at six o'clock, not the middle of the night. Oh, I know a song about the middle of the night. Would you like to hear it? No! I'll take that as a yes. In the middle of the night, the stars twinkle bright. Rinky dinky doo, rinky diddly dee. Dooby dooby doo, dibbly dibbly dee. <laughs> All together now. Rinky dinky doo, rinky diddly dee. Dooby dooby doo. For bed. It was lovely meeting you, Mr. Gnome. But now we need to get some sleep. Oh, yes. A good night's sleep is very important. Rinky dinky doo, rinky diddly dee. Dooby dooby doo, dibbly dibbly dee. Rinky dinky doo. Oh, stop! Would you like me to stop? Yes! And please go! Would you like me to go? Yes! Goodbye! <laughs> oh, sleep well. See you in the morning. <laughs> Mr Gnome is funny. He is silly. Yes, really silly. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. <sighs> <gasps> it's the gnome. He's come back to eat our breakfast. Oh, a mole. <laughs> oh, it's eating our washing. Shh, 
Shoo! Shoo! Go away, Mole! <laughs> Princess Holly, do you know a magic spell to get rid of moles? I'm sorry, Mr Elf. I don't. Oh, dear. Think, Mr Elf, what gets rid of moles? Hello! Yes, moles don't like us gnomes. No idea why. Ah, uh, thank you, Mr Gnome, for uh, saving our campsite from the mole. That's all right. What's for breakfast? The mole ate all the food. Oh, dear. Good morning. Nanny, Nanny Plum. Plum! How was your night? It was very strange. Mr Gnome turned up and he loves oranges. And Mr Gnome sang a funny song called Rinky Dinky Doo. Then a mole came along and ate our washing line and all our food. And now we haven't any breakfast. Yes, I thought that might happen. That's why I've brought the magic picnic basket. Breakfast for everyone! Hooray! Oh, I'm actually very hungry. Oh, have you not eaten either? Not today. Oh, dear, it's empty. <laughs> it isn't empty. It's a magic picnic basket. Magic basket, please. Breakfast for everyone! Hooray! I get the idea. Magic basket, please. Twenty poached eggs. Lots of toast. Nine jars of jam. Forty sausages and ninety pancakes. Yippee! What a splendid breakfast. Thank you, Mr Gnome. Breakfast is one of the things gnomes know a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yummy, yummy. Oh, oh, I almost forgot my balanced diet. I shouldn't be eating all this without also eating an orange. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere hidden amongst thorny brambles is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. The party! Come on, everyone. We've got to get ready for the party. Party? Daisy and Poppy's birthday party. <gasps> oh, no! Party! Party! Two magical toddlers are bad enough. But when all their little friends turn up, it's... <laughs> I've got it. We'll have the party, but we won't invite any guests. Da, 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 da. I've sent out all the party invites and everybody's coming. Oh, who's coming? There's little Tarquin. Tarquin like party. Oh, no. Tarquin is a monster. And there's Raspberry. Not my little sister. Even her wand is rude. <laughs> A nettle elf. My little sister. She's got a stinging nettle in her hat. And it stings when you touch it. Nettle elf is the naughtiest of the lot. What do you expect? She's got a pirate for an uncle. Yes. Redbeard the elf pirate. <sighs> this party is going to be a disaster. Don't worry. I've got it all planned. We'll have magic games, followed by my magic show, and ending with magic jelly. Magicy, magicy. <laughs> I was wrong. The party's not going to be a disaster. It's going to be a catastrophe. Thank you, Your Majesty. I know, King Thistle. You could have an elf 
party. A what? An elf party has no magic at all. But what about my magic show? The toddlers love a magic show. We have the great wizardo, an elf conjurer. He doesn't do real magic. It's just tricks. I like it, Ben. It sounds very safe. Yeah, and boring. Exactly. Nanny Plum, call this great wizardo and tell him we've got children we want to bore. I mean, entertain. Ugh. Very well, Your Majesty. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Tarquin like party. Bye-bye, Tarquin. Be good. Yes, Mama. <laughs> oh. Hello, Nettle. Ow! That stings! Nanny Plum! Me fruity pancake. Ugh. Enjoy the party, Nettle. I'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> oh, settle down, children, please. <laughs> the great Wizardo. That's just the wise old elf. I'm not just the wise old elf. I'm also a children's entertainer. Oh, carry on, then. These children are a bit of a handful, especially when they do magic. There won't be any magic at this party. I'll put the toddler's wands into the library, where they can't cause any trouble. Very clever. Let's get this party started. Hooray! Musical statues. When the music stops, you have to stand as still as a statue. Aha! Raspberry, I saw you move. And you, Nettle. That's because they haven't been turned to stone yet. Ah! Strawberry, you've magic them into real statues. Of course. That's how we fairies play musical statues. This is not a fairy party. Turn them back to normal. OK. The big children's ones are going into the library with the others. Now it's time to play Stick the Tail on the Donkey. Here's the donkey. Looks like a cabbage. Or a duck. It's a donkey. Now, I will blindfold Nettle Elf and she'll try to stick this tail on the donkey. <laughs> Ow! She stung me again! It's a stupid game anyway. You need a big dragon to stick the tail on. Ah! Oh, looks like the twins' party has started. Ah! Get rid of the dragon! All right. Just trying to liven the party up a bit. I'm putting the grown-ups ones in the library too. Now for my conjuring show. Hooray! Queen Sissel, please take a card. <laughs> Don't show me. What is your card? Um, the two of hearts. Your card is the two of hearts. That's the worst trick I've ever seen. I thought it was rather good. How's it done? For my next trick, I will turn myself into a mouse. Ooh. You little ones need to wait behind this door for a moment. How do you change yourself into a mouse? I put these ears on and this nose, then I... Um, was it a good idea putting the toddlers in the library? What? It's the same room you put all the wands in. Ah. <laughs> Don't worry, the great wizardo will sort this out. I'll show them my mouse trick. That will surprise them. They'll be surprised how bad it is. So it might work. Look, children, I've turned myself into a... Mousey, mousey! Squeak! Wow, that's not a bad costume. Ah! Uh... The toddlers have magic the wise old elf into a real mouse. Squeak! Can someone please magic me back into an elf? No, we can't do any magic because somebody put all the ones in the library. Ah, yes. Squeak! Ahoy, me hearties! I'm here to pick up my niece, Meryl. Oh, uh, 
Actually, the party's not quite over yet. <laughs> no? The toddlers are in the library with the dangerous spell books. They've got all the magic wands. And they've magic the wise old elf into a mouse. Squeak! Sounds like a fun party. Oh, no. It's gone quiet. They're up to something. Let's take a look. Hello? Hello? There's no one here. Just our wands. Oh, it's good to have you back again. Uh, Nanny, now you have your wand again, would you mind, um... Of course, oh great wizardo. Silly old elf, back to yourself. Oh! So where be the poor little toddlers? I was afraid of this. Daisy and Poppy have found the secret passageway. Ooh. Where does the secret passageway go? To the secret room. I never knew we had a secret room. That's because it's secret. The room contains a magical force that must never be let out. So, not a good room for toddlers to be in, then. <laughs> I hear the sound of excited little ones and something else. We must not enter. Honestly, what a lot of fuss about a terrible magical force of unimaginable power. I'll handle this. Good luck, me brave little pumpkin. Go off! <laughs> what can you see? Terrible things! Redbeard to the rescue! <laughs> Here be the toddlers. No! Hang on, Nanny Pum! Here she be! You're safe now, my plum pudding. I've seen many a terrible thing at sea, but nothing, nothing as bad as what I saw in that room. That's why we tend to keep the door locked. <laughs> Good. The party's over. It all went rather well, I thought. But what about the jelly? We haven't had magic jelly yet. Magic jelly! Magic jelly! All right, Nanny, but please don't make too much this time. <laughs> Look, magic jelly! That's good. The party must be almost over. Ah, <laughs> oh, Raspberry. Have you had a nice time? Yes, Mummy. Tarquin, say thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, Nettles. Ow! She stung me again. It's Raspberry's birthday next. We hear you've got a children's entertainer who's good with toddlers. Yes. Here he is, the great Wizardo. Um, I... Wonderful. See you all at Raspberry's party, then. <laughs> party, party! <laughs> Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree on Christmas Eve. Snow! Come on, elves. Let's get the elf plane loaded. Radio, wind the engine. Roger that, Mr. Elf. Wind the engine. Radio. Hi, boys. Hi, Hi, girls. What's happening? Dad has an important job to do. What kind of job? He's flying to the North Pole. The North Pole? Yes. We're making our final delivery of toys to Father Christmas. Ooh. Flight 1000. Ready for takeoff. Flight 1000. You are cleared for takeoff. Roger that, Control. Why are you delivering toys?
toys to Father Christmas. Well, who do you think makes all Father Christmas's toys? Um, elves? That's right, us elves. Ah. Elves work all year deep underground in the elf factory making toys. Then, in December, Ben's dad flies to the North Pole and delivers the toys to Father Christmas. Does he land at the North Pole and meet Father Christmas? No, he never lands. He drops the toys by parachute. Then Father Christmas wraps the toys up and delivers them to the children of the world. All the children? Even our friend Lucy? Oh, yes. Even Lucy. I love Christmas. And I love snow. Me too. I wish it was snowing now. Yes, it's Christmas Eve. When's it going to snow? Maybe it's time for a weather forecast. Weather forecast? Yes, we can use my elf weather detector. Wow! So can this machine tell if it's going to snow? Of course. How does it work? I listen to the weather through this giant ear trumpet. It's so sensitive, I can hear a butterfly flapping its wings in Africa. Can you hear any butterflies? Ah, don't talk loudly into the trumpet. Sorry, wise old elf. Now, please stay quiet. Ah, interesting. Is it a butterfly? No, I can hear weather. What sort of weather? Uh, <clears throat> there's a chance of sun or rain with clear skies or clouds. Is it going to snow? I can say it certainly might, but then again, it might not. Oh. I know. Let's ask Nanny Plum if it's going to snow. Why ask Nanny Plum? Nanny can tell the future. Ha! This I must see. <laughs> Nanny Plum! Nanny Plum! You can tell the future, can't you? I certainly can. Can you tell if it's going to snow today? Yes, I'll use my special snow forecasting globe. Oh, ho, ho. I see. You gaze into the crystal ball and it tells our fortune, I suppose. <laughs> no, you just shake it, like this. There we are. It'll snow today. Hooray! Stop, stop, stop. How on earth can that thing predict the weather? It's never been wrong. What if you shook it in the summer? Well, you don't shake it in the summer, obviously. That would be silly. Well, you can't tell exactly when it's going to snow, can you? Yes, I can. It's going to snow now. Abracadabra! That's cheating. No, it's not. Make it snow! Nanny's made it snow. Let's go and see it. <laughs> <laughs> what? But where is the snow? Yeah! Nanny Plum! It's snowing inside. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> snow! Snow! <laughs> Let's play snowballs! Ooh, Nanny Plum, it's snowing in the sitting room. Is this your doing? Yes, it is. Inside is for sitting in armchairs and reading. Outside is for snow. Oh, inside, outside, whatever. Nanny Plum, you're fired. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm taking away your wand until you learn how to control your spells better. But what about the snow? Not another word. Aww. Everyone out. Now Daddy's taken Nanny Plum's wand, she won't be able to magic any snow. Now we won't have any snow for Christmas. There's always a chance it might snow anyway. I can hear something. Is it snow? No, it's the elf plane. Dad's back from the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that 
that's the last delivery done. Dad, did you see snow? Yes, lots of it. Enough snow to last me a lifetime. Now you've finished your work, Mr Elf. Are you on holiday? Holiday? Good gracious, no. It's Christmas Eve. There's work to be done preparing tonight's Elf and Fairy Feast. Oh, yes, the Midnight Elf and Fairy Feast. On Christmas Eve. With music and singing and lanterns. Yes, and those lanterns don't hang themselves up to work. Stop, Mr Elf. It's about time you had a rest. A rest? You've been working hard all year. Just sit down and relax for five minutes. I can give you three. You work too hard. Elves like working hard. And I'm an elf. <gasps> oh, dear. You really must relax. Just say, I'm on holiday. Well, all right. I'm on holiday. Ah. That's nice. Hello? Wise old elf speaking? Ho, ho, ho! It's Father Christmas here. Oh, Mr Christmas. We seem to be missing some toys. I can't find Box 571. Box 571? I need those toys before tonight. Or oh, some children will not get their Christmas presents. Never fear, Mr Christmas. We will get the box to you. I will deliver it personally. Box 571? It could be anywhere. We'll never find it. Is it this box, Dad? The one that says Box 571? What? Well done, Ben. You found it. To the elf plane. We leave immediately. Well, that was a nice holiday, while it lasted. Are you going back to the North Pole? Can we come? Can we, Dad? Please? Please, Mr Elf. I don't mind who comes, but we must leave straight away. Hooray! Brilliant! I'll just get my wands back from King Thistle and then... There's no time for that, Nanny. We need to get these toys to Father Christmas right away. Elf honour is at stake. Ready for takeoff, Captain. Everyone on board. Ben, it's snowing. Oh, wow! Snow! You see, my snow globe is never wrong. Hmm. What do all these buttons do? Don't touch anything, please, Naddy Plum. Wind the engine. Righty ho! Ready for takeoff. We're not going to play in the snow. We're just dropping off the toy box and coming straight home. So we won't meet Father Christmas? Good gracious, no. We're on a mission. There'll be no playing in the snow and no meeting Father Christmas. Join us in our next episode when we play in the snow and meet Father Christmas. Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts on Christmas Eve. The North Pole! Are we nearly there yet? Yes, Nanny. We're almost at the North Pole. Will we meet Father Christmas? No, Holly. Remember, we never land at the North Pole. We drop the toys by parachute. Does Father Christmas catch them?
them? No. The toys are collected by... Goblins. Not goblins. Arctic elves. Goblins, pixies, whatever. My brother is an Arctic elf. I didn't know you had a brother. Oh, yes. He's in charge of the Arctic elves. Calling Arctic Elves, this is Flight 1001. Receiving you loud and clear, Flight 1001. Please drop the toys. Righty o! <laughs> toys away! Now we can go home. It's a shame we never met Father Christmas or the Arctic Elves. The good thing is, we'll be back in time for the Elf and Fairy Feast. Oh, yes. The Elf and Fairy Feast. At midnight. With dancing. And lanterns. Oh, dear. The Elf plane sounds a bit odd. Is it broken? Of course not. This plane is built to last 1,000 flights. Oh. Uh, this is flight 1,001. Oh, look. Lots of cups and things are falling out. Uh-oh. We're going down. Phew. We landed safely. That was lucky. Lucky? We're stuck at the North Pole. But now we might meet Father Christmas. The Arctic Elves. I suppose we might see some penguins. Oh, I like penguins. Penguins live at the South Pole. This is the North Pole. What's that waddling towards us then? Penguins! Not penguins. Arctic Elves. It's my twin brother. Hello, little brother. Hello. Are you really as old as each other? No, I'm older. But you're twins. I'm older and wiser by three minutes. Hardly older at all. I am the wiser, older elf. <laughs> when you little boys have stopped squabbling, maybe the wisest person here can work out how we get back home. Oh, uh. Maybe Father Christmas could help. Very clever. Follow me, everyone, to the house of Father Christmas. Father Christmas! Maybe if you're lucky, Nanny Plum, you'll see a penguin. <laughs> Violet, can I borrow your wand? OK. Oh, look, wise old elf, a penguin at the North Pole. Oh, very clever, Nanny Plum. What? <laughs> Ooh, Gaston stopped moving. Interesting. Gaston has frozen. Oh, no! We need to get the ladybird somewhere warm. Yes, insects don't like the winter. Here we are, the house of Father Christmas. It looks like a Christmas pudding. Oh, wonderful. Yes, little brother, I built it myself. Well, uh, when I said wonderful, I meant it's OK. <laughs> this is Father Christmas's study. We can thaw the ladybird out by the fire. Are these Father Christmas's slippers? Yes, they are. Wow! His feet are bigger than all of us. I think Gaston is thawing out. <laughs> Gaston's back! <laughs> Box 571 delivered. Oh, thank you, little brother. It would be simply spiffing if next year you made the last toy delivery before Christmas Eve. What? At least I make toys. You just wrap them up. Ah, but wrapping toys is the important bit. You have to be as old and wise as me to understand that. You're no wiser than me. But I am, by three minutes. And I always will be. Ahem. Talking of wrapping presents, shouldn't somebody be doing that by now? 
It's Christmas Eve! Goodness me, you're right! To the present wrapping machines! That's the last of this year's presents wrapped. Time for a holiday. Hurrah! Uh, we've just brought one more box of toys to wrap. Sorry to end your holiday. That's okay. Arctic elves love wrapping presents. And we are... Oh, no! Arctic elves! We've brought you toy robots, dolls, space rockets and cars. Not bad. You've done a good job, brother. Oh, thank you, brother. When the presents are wrapped up, who delivers them? Ho, ho, ho! I deliver them, of course. Father Christmas! Call me Santa. I hear you're in a spot of bother. Yes, we need some help getting home. I've got some work to do tonight. I could drop you off on the way. Are you going our way? I'm going every way. Yay! <laughs> I say, that penguin's a long way from home. I'd better drop him off too. Ho, ho, ho! Away we go! Have you got a present for our friend Lucy? Lucy? She's a little girl we know. Of course there's a present for her. Hmm. Why do people always have such small chimneys? We could deliver the presents for you. All right. Put these presents in Lucy's Christmas stocking. Don't forget the tangerine. <gasps> Someone's coming! Keep still! Pretend to be a statue! That's odd. Some of the decorations have fallen off the tree. This little elf must go here. And this pretty fairy should be at the top of the tree. That was really close. Let's deliver Lucy's presents. Ben! Holly! Lucy! You're supposed to be asleep. I'm too excited about Christmas. What are you doing here? We're delivering your Christmas presents. Whoa! Do elves and fairies get presents as well? No, but tonight we have the elf and fairy feast. There's lovely music and lanterns in the trees. That sounds nice. It's beautiful. We'd better go. Santa's waiting on your roof. Santa? On my roof? Cool. Merry Christmas, Lucy. Merry Christmas. Ah, there you are. Uh, there wasn't a little snack down there for old Santa, was there? Yes, a mint pie. Delicious. And this drink. Even better. <coughs> We can't start the Elf and Fairy Feast until the others are back. Well, where are they? Ho, ho, ho! <gasps> Hello, everyone! We're back! Father Christmas gave us a lift on his sleigh. Thank you, Father Christmas. Would you like to stay for our Elf and Fairy Feast? No time, I'm afraid. I have to deliver presents to all the children of the world. How many deliveries have you done so far? One. Well, good luck. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Good. Now we're all here. Christmas can begin. Hooray! <laughs>